man, it's been a while. Let's see. <clears throat> yes, 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 your boy's back at it. Couple of things I picked. Wait, that's not it. Hold on. Let me try again. Yes, sir, officially back at it. This is Punker Mike. Wait, that's not it either. Damn. Hey, everybody, it's Punker Mike. No. Hey there, YouTube viewers. Punker Mike back. Damn. Forgot my intro. Let's see. Hold on. Let me hop on my channel real quick. Damn, it's been so long. What's up, guys? And ladies. And welcome back to another. Yes, sir. Evil lurks in the mind of a bad guy. Sweet the leg. Michael's great. I like Michael. Sweet the leg. Everybody bang! Sweet the leg. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Sweet the leg. God, I hate punkers. Sweet the leg. What's your name? Punker? Sweet the leg. So I just got back from DesignerCon 2022 in Anaheim, and what a super cool show. DesignerCon's like one of my favorite conventions. Just the overall spread of like different artists from like toy industry, from comics and art and music. It's like a really cool hub to see some like really cool shit, meet some really cool people. Uh, I got to hang out with Chaney from Toy Migos, Chaney 180. Got to meet Chicken Burger Disco. Hung out with him a little bit. You should follow his content on Instagram. He posts some like really cool content like every day. Got to meet some like really cool people and pass out my zine to some like really, really cool people. I seen Opio from Souls of Mischief Hieroglyphics there. Got to chat it up with him. Gave him one of my zines. Saw Murs there. He grabbed one of my zines and met like a bunch of cool people. Industry dudes, artists, sculptors. It's a super cool event, man. I had, I had a blast. And actually the day before uh, in Burbank, I got a tour of Gentle Giant Studios, so Adam Van playing with myself, shout out to Adam, hooked it up with the tour, it was super cool, had a celebrity guest, Phil Ramirez, doing the tour with us, so that was super cool, got to hang out with Phil and Adam, showed me the studio, went on full tour guide Barbie mode and like broke down every little thing with the studio and all like the maquettes and statues and all the workings, it was super cool man, really inspiring. It was so much to take in. I was like scrambled for like the rest of the day. Just like what a cool like experience. So fatty shout out to Adam and Phil for hooking that up. And then, yeah, so these are some of my come ups from Designer Con. So I just got in the background. I got my zine. So this is the zine that I came out with. 20 pages jam packed full of toy art, plastic alchemy, customs, all kinds of cool stuff. So this guy right here, he's like a Sofubi kind of character. The Amazing Gordo. So this was from... We Become Monsters, so shout out to We Become Monsters. Got some cool stickers right here that he hooked up. But yeah, I really wanted to paint one of these. I've been following uh, this dude on Instagram for quite some time. And uh, I just thought this character was like really gross, really nasty, and I really wanted to paint him up. So I snagged one, uh, so I'll paint him up and customize him, add some cool little stuff. So check out We Become Monsters on IG, and he's got some really cool shit. And then one of the really cool people I got to meet uh, at the event was David Igo, and he's doing this Kickstarter here pretty soon. Monsters! So, like, there's these really cool, like, Street Shark, Ninja Turtle, He-Man, like, all the stuff we loved growing up, kind of, like, meshed up characters. These are actually drawn by Erwin Papa. But, like, there's these crazy characters. This is Sham Moo Moo, and, uh, I have some B-roll of his booth, but he has some really cool shit. So definitely when that Kickstarter goes live, you're going to want to support that for sure. And then these blind boxes right here. So this is these Junji Ito Uzumaki pocket curse. So I got Mr. Saito right here. So these are super cool. And then I got the snail, all haggard. And then another little blind box I got was from 52 Toys. This little Shin-Chan little blind box. So I got the little six Shin-Chan. So he's got like the little coal pack for his head. He's got the blankie. He take the blankie off. And he's all little sleepy boy. And he's got his little sleeping pad. So these are actually really cool. Pretty big. I was hoping to get like the little TV one right here where he's snacking. Because Dassin's coming out with that action bastard. So I thought that would be a kind of a cool shot somehow. You know, him sitting watching TV and you got action bastard. 
But yeah, I'll try to pick up a couple more of these as well. And then I also got like this cool like Ninja Turtle zine. I got this at Irwin, Irwin Papa's booth. Irwin did this cool fucking slash pin up right here on the back. So kind of just got like some bootleg turtle comics in here with like a bunch of different artists. Bunch of cool shit. I was already sifting. I haven't read it cover to cover yet. But I was kind of just like sifting through, checking out the artwork. Some really cool stuff. Look at that one. That one's pretty tight. And here's all the artists that contributed to the zine. Super cool book. Stoked to like look through this and read it a little bit more. vulture looks like a six foot wingspan not bad I got a bigger wingspan but let's check it out sorry brah that ain't no six feet so I switched out the Conan head and popped on this unparalleled universe odious head Threw a little bandana on him. That bandana I hand screen printed. A project I did a while back where I was screen printing 112 scale bandanas and serape like ponchos. So I threw that on his dome. And then the bat's just a Louisville slugger from a McFarland Sports Picks. Just a generic red hoodie that I have a Souls of Mischief iron on transfer. I've used that in a couple of shots on various figures as well. And then the arms. So this is still the Mezco Conan body. I heat and popped off the old school Toy Biz Werewolf by Night figure. Popped those on there. Gave homeboy a little swag with the hand in the pocket. And these long shorts with the long belt and the chain came from like a rare Michael Lau Gardner Palmer figures. And then when it comes down to the sneaks, those are just Mezco All-Star Mez Taylors from like the Pink Skulls. And I actually cheated with the legs. So I just got a Marvel Legends lower calf, took that off, made the hole a little larger to fit on the uh, Mezco, and then I modified the peg so that would just plug into the shoe, and then I just used some like medical grade tape to look like socks. And then these are just kind of like a temporary on off, it works for now, it's nothing permanent, just for a couple shots. And then the crates come from these grocery gang props, these just little crates that I repainted. The speakers and the record player all come from these Japanese blind box that are uh, just various audio equipment. Comes with like mixers, speakers, the record player, records, one's a cassette player. Um, they're just blind box, so I just bought a whole case of them and I got that shit on eBay a while back. And then the vinyl sleeves are props that I made a while back for. I think like a ACBA World Championship tournament, I made like about a hundred different records just for this big setup that I did.
Another setup with my Hood's Mezco Vapor figure. So he's rocking the Public Enemy shirt. So this is a shirt that I made. I got a black 3A shirt, and then I printed out a Public Enemy logo on an iron decal sheet. And then I just cut it out and ironed it on. So pretty easy way to make little custom shirts as long as you're able to find like decent quality like 112 scale shirts. Then he's rocking the gold chain. He's rocking the... Uh, NYC hat, like the kind of Mets looking hat that Vapor comes with, and then I put a little do-rag on him. So I made the do-rag out of old basketball compression shorts. You know, like the basketball, they're kind of like chones. It's like a really nice material. Um, I had a pair of old shorts that I cut up and I just used the fabric for various stuff. Super hard to put on, like tie it in the back and make sure it's kind of form-fitting, but it looks pretty cool. And then I also switched out the pants. The Vapor figure comes with like the blue jeans. I put the... Uh, like the blackish skinny jeans from the pink skulls in this setup i have them with the ninja turtle ice cream and we got the paleta wrapper right there too and then various stuff on the stoop this is like a little staircase from like a tech deck figure set i just like repainted it a long time ago uh, and then he's got the backpack i kind of dirtied up the backpack with some powdered pigment did a little wu-tang logo the little akira pill wrote vapor then he's got his black book with some markers and a pen. Got the pack of smokes with the Zippo lighter. And then some various stuff. Got the boom box, the ghetto blaster with some cassette tapes on top. Some milk crates, rattle cans, some junk in the back. Some trash cans, punks blue ribbon, pizza boxes, beer bottles. And then this is like a little piece of the dial. This is just like one little wall. And you can see just right over here some VHS tapes. So I have it stacked up. So that way the staircase goes like up to the door. So the previous shot that I did where he was uh, walking with the paint roller and the paint can, I just basically had the same setup, but I had like this dia wall like right here to make it look like it was like a corner of an alley or like behind a building. Where this is more so like on the street. So kind of utilizing the same kind of pieces to just getting as much use out of like a little setup as I can before I put everything away. Cause you see, it's like kind of, I got all these like different like props and stuff. I'm trying like different setups. I have like this little gate right here with like fence. I even had some, um, some like greenery. I was trying a bunch of different stuff to just see how it looked. Even had the Palatero man cart right here. So I was trying just a bunch of different stuff. So in the previous shot, I had uh, him holding the paint can or the paint bucket with uh, the roller, the paint roller. And this is a little prop set that I made. So shout out to Steven Fernandez, a.k.a. Snez, a.k.a. 52420 on Instagram. He had shown how to make a paint bucket out of an old like RX bottle, you know, like the pill RX bottles. And I kind of just like cut it in half. Made some texture on it, painted it. I even filled it with paint inside. Well, I did hot glue and then I just painted it. Then I got the lid with the paper clip, made like a handle. And then the paint roller. Uh, so Fortnite had that like graffiti figure and he came with like a weapon that was like a crowbar attached to like a paint roller. So I cut off the paint roller portion and then I just dremeled out a hole right here and then I got an old paintbrush and I sanded the finish off the paintbrush, glued it in there. And then with a little bit of felt, I uh, super glued the felt on top of the roller part to give it texture. And then once that dried, I kind of burned it to kind of burn up the hairs. And then I just painted that white so that looks like a good roller. Even though um, it's kind of stylized where it's like, bigger on the edges and it kind of like goes it kind of dips down a little bit but uh that still looks pretty cool and then i just added a bunch of like pain and and dirt on the handle to give it some more and i'm having so much fun with this figure this mezco vapor so many cool accessories bunch of cool different heads the playability man this figure is rad i know a lot of people shit on like the rumble of society or like their creator own type characters but i think mezco kind of knocks it out of the park i mean it usually comes with a lot of cool accessories Bunch of playability, swappability, kit bash possibilities, and kind of gives you a chance to use your imagination and kind of create your own stories and use figures and bad guys and monsters and props and villains from different lines and, you know, something that I kind of like doing, I guess. Anyway, this little setup right here is kind of like a prop dump. 
with a bunch of just like Ninja Turtle type theme props. So we got Vapor here with this Ninja Turtle birthday hat. Bratch. There's like a little blind box figure that I got. There's like little blind box eggs. Uh, you know, bookcase right here that came with Marvel Legends uh, Spider-Man from the movie. Got a little TGRI canister of ooze. Marty McFly skateboard. Got some turtle comics, shredder figure. And this is that, um, it's like Lori. Little like ballet studio that I turned into like the little nug nest. Got Phoebe Kate on the wall. What's up? Phoebe Kate. Guitar. There's supposed to be a, um, a hoverboard there, but I think I took it down because it was in the shot. And then we got the grimy couch. Shout out to Nick for the material to make that couch. There's a video on the YouTube channel showing you how to make 1 12th scale couch props where I show you how I made that couch check it out if you haven't already it's a pretty cool little video anyway we got some uh, Ninja Turtle minifigures got the turtle com of course the turtle cereal with the Michelangelo cereal bowl with some cereal in it that I made got the spoon or whatever Ninja Turtle VHS VHS tapes more comics Neca pizza some Surge soda cans, Ninja Turtle gummies. Dude, not a day goes by I don't think about those gummies. They were probably like so bad for you, but those were so delicious. And like sometimes I'll like smell something like a car freshener, like when I'm getting into like cars or something. Or like I'll have like some candy, I don't know, some, some like sweet and I'll get like like a little nostalgic trigger where like I kind of remember the taste of them. Oh, and I get so excited. They just had like such a unique taste. I don't know. Maybe they didn't, but I just remember I love the fuck out of those gummies. Got a melted Ninja Turtle ice cream with gumball eyes with the wrapper. And, oh yeah, this didn't make the cut, but got the 112 scale arcade prop that I made. I mean, he's got so many cool heads. And this one, this one definitely has some like Jamie Hewlett vibes for sure. I think that's why I like, maybe that's why I like this figure so much. Cause I just like that weird skin tone with the hair and the crazy eyes and the big features just kind of reminds me of like Jamie Hewlett art, something that you'd see like in Deadline magazine or something. Oh yeah, and then Homeboy shirt is a Sid Vicious shirt. Ganked that off of my Danny custom from the first Ninja Turtle movie. Um, I'm not sure if I ever showed him off. I definitely did like a shot or two with him. Um, he looks goofy as hell because he doesn't have a shirt on. But this was like a Stranger Things figure that I repainted the pants. I think I just dry brushed them. Maybe the shoes too? I can't remember. Um, dremeled the fuck out of the body of the torso. That way I can pop in the Farm Boy Star Wars Black Series Luke arms. That's an Alan Two Dick head from Firefly, uh, from Funko Legacy. Like when the Funko Legacy was making six inch articulated action figures, they did like Fantastic Mr. Fox, Firefly, Rocketeer, Game of Thrones. Um, so yeah, he was from the Firefly line. And then I just repainted the face. Well, repainted the whole head. Uh, modded the neck so it would fit. And then I had the 3A shirt. And I did a uh, Sid Vicious iron-on decal. But Homeboy Vapor ganked that. And then in case you haven't seen the uh, the Nug Nest. Just got a bunch of cool posters and stuff. Got Vanity. What's up? Wait, did I mention? Uh, Phoebe Cake. Best Marvel movie ever. Dolph Lundgren Punisher. What's up? And then behind the Foot Clan because they didn't have any... I don't think I have any Ninja Turtle representation on the back wall. Behind the Shredder poster is my boy. Oh, Hacksaw Jim Nuggin, bro. What's up? I haven't done nothing with this cable in a long ass time. Same with these uh, K2SO little death droids that I made. The little wild card death squad. So I kind of did like cable just doing a run through. He's just mobbing through this abandoned spot. Knocking off all these droids. Got this dude taking a hit right to the chest. And then he's standing. Uh, that's like a clear stand. I think that came with like Headpool. Marvel Legends Deadpool with the Headpool. 
and then cable I got a push pin and then some like little metal stick so at a certain angle you can't see boom right there you can't see nothing and then this is just uh got some wooden floor pieces from this dial this is like the dilapidated dial that I made a long time ago and I just kind of modulated the pieces made this little base a long time ago it's just like scrapped up wood and then just have some layered stuff in the back the background will pretty much be a little blurry but before I took all this stuff down uh, I did the little dead Ted's and that little trap house counting a bunch of money and then I kind of switched the pieces around before I put everything away and set up, did my next setup. So I just got this big ass box in the mail. This is a diorama from Ogie's Dioramas. This box is fucking huge. You see it's just almost as big as my coffee table. And for scale, there's a 112th scale action figure. So you can see this box is fucking huge. So I just got done taking a bunch of pictures of this setup with this new Union Gomez figure. Uh, fatty shout out to Mezco for sending this figure over a little early so I could take pictures. Been having a lot of fun so far. Like I said, this is the Union Gomez. So he's like a construction worker. You can see he's decked out. He's got that sledgehammer. He's got like those thick leather like work gloves, the construction helmet. Uh, he's got like the steel toe boots, he's got the overalls, the tool belt with the various tools. You got like a hammer, crescent wrench, two flathead screwdrivers. He comes with a bunch of other tools that I'm going to use probably in the next shot or that shot after. And then you can see a little grub right there wearing the little tiny hard hat with the high vis vest and the little mini sledgehammer. And then Boom Boom's like this like welding box slash kind of has like lunch pail vibes kind of. So super fun figure. So this shot's like he just busted this wall down in this dilapidated building. So the way I kind of have him pose and everything, kind of almost like a Jack Torrance, like busting down the wall, like, here's Johnny, kind of thing. So I have a bunch of random stuff. So this is like my dilapidated building that I use a bunch. Uh, so I have one wall right here, one wall turned sideways right here. So like you can get like the exposed cement with like the rebar. And then, like, the wood flooring. And then a bunch of just rocks and rubble and, like, little pieces of wood. And then the back is, like, that random wall that I made just out of balsa wood and uh, cardboard. And then 
all far in the back. That's the other part of the dilapidated building. So I want to give a huge fatty shout out to Adam Loving, aka Adam Loving Art on Instagram. So dude made this Johnny from The Humans. The Humans is like one of my favorite comic book series done by Tom Neely and Keenan Marshall Keller. It's about like apes and monkeys that are in like the 70s outlaw biker gang. It's really savage, super cool, really dope artwork. Anyway, Adam made this custom Johnny from the humans and he sent it over my way man which is super freaking cool it looks like he used the uh, NECA Caesar from Planet of the Apes the lower half looks like all Marvel Legends parts and then he got some soft goods got like a soft goods tank top and then on the back he did like the humans logo he even drew like the middle finger for life till death this thing's freaking sick dude so fatty shout out to Adam for putting this bad boy together and sending it my way Super stoked to have them displayed on my shelf. I don't really have too many customs from uh, other people, so it's kind of cool to have this on my shelf. Especially, it's one of my favorite comic books. So, hell yeah. Thanks, Adam. And he also sent over uh, this, like, little knitted sweater that's like a jacket. It's like Kaneda's jacket from Akira. And uh, it fits my little dude, like, perfect. It's sick. Um, I'd go grab it, but little man would get all pissed if he sees me taking that out of his room but super sick that he sent that over for little dude and he sent over a couple issues of his comic book which is freaking sick man he wrote and drew his own comic book i mean that's badass and i really dig like the oversized magazine format kind of reminds me of like love and rockets or like the early turtles books and then this one right here is like on newsprint it's like on some type of like coded newsprint and i think the coded newsprint kind of lends well to his uh his art style and like the color palette he chose so it's really nice and these are like really high quality like prints, man. It's like a really sick little package, man. These came out really nice. So yeah, if you guys are interested in learning about the Italian Renaissance, check out Renaissance Men, Adam Loving. Check out his work. Check out his Instagram. Dude's making customs and making artwork and comics, man. Super cool, man. Good looking out, Adam. So this was a real fun little setup that I did. So these acid rain luggins. These little figures are freaking awesome. They look so cool. Now they're three and three quarter inch figures, so they're meant to be, you know, like scale with three and three quarter inch. But the way they look, the oversized heads and the puffy outfits, I thought they'd scale pretty good, like with one twelfth as just like a smaller type character. You know, like a Jawa, like a smaller type character, something like that. And so the setup right here, the uh, the floor, this big floor, this is from Ogi. Ogi's dioramas. This is just the base to a big dio that he made for me. And then these are kind of pieces of the Dio. This is a Star Wars Black Series Land Speeder, the one that came with Luke. The bucket hat. I just popped the hood open. Kind of dirtied it up a little bit. Got a little crate full of junk. This little robot, which I'm not sure where he's from. He's like some import figure that came with like a two-pack of these robots. I think it was from like a video game or something. I'm not sure. I just thought the robots were pretty cool. He's got like this cool like articulated dome. Came with a bunch of cool accessory pieces. He's holding... Just some tools like a impact gun, like a little wrench or something. These are tech deck little wrenches. Got the cool lugging figure back there. Just checking them out. Watching this dude scrap this little land speeder. And I got another one of the dudes. I like this guy the best. He's got like a cool little hard eye and everything. And then this is like an old school. This is like old school, like a three and three quarter inch GI Joe, like little tank vehicle thing. I've had this since I was like a little kid. And then uh, I just got a bunch of junk, just like some random junk that I just piled in there just from various figures and model kits and just random stuff. And it's actually in like a WWF like backstage like crate or something. And then I have these wheels from like a model car that I just have leaned against so it looks like it has traction. But really it's just like those little tiny wheels. And then, you know, I just have these like brick wall things that I made. Just an orange poster board with light blasting on it. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Picture came out okay, but the setup itself is like super cool, I think. BTS on this setup. So that was a quick little setup I did. 
Uh, got the Chris Gupton Dio. So the Chris Gupton Diorama. I've used this thing quite a few times. If you guys aren't following Chris Gupton, definitely check out his work. One of the top diorama builders in my opinion. Dude does some killer work. And uh, I always have a lot of fun when I whip out this diorama. And then I got the Mezco uh, Game of Death Gomez. He's in that yellow tracksuit. And then he's got like the battle damaged head with like the squinty eye. He just got tuned up a little bit. So this figure is it's kind of like a little kit bash close swap from uh, Come For Arts. They're like seven, eight inch figures, cloth goods. Um, they come in like these blind bag like beer cans. So this dude originally had a uh, orange mohawk. I just took off his mohawk and I painted it black. Gave him a little punk spiky bracelet. And then I changed out his clothes. So I think he had different... Uh, I switched out a couple parts from some of the other Comfort Arts figures. So like I put these like Chuck Taylors on them. So these all-stars. And then the, the wristband came from I think like the girl. One of the girls. And then his, like, shirt, his blue shirt is from uh, Star Wars Black Series Farm Boy Luke. Um, I remember Ross had those, like, on sale, like, a long time ago, so I scooped a bunch up just for custom fodder. And uh, so I just dyed that with blue writ dye uh, to get a little light blue. And then the shorts are from uh, 3A. They were, like, 3A white pants, and I just cut them down to shorts. Make them look like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from Game of Death. So I kind of made, like, a quick little Hakeem Mantis little kit bash to go with this figure. I do have a, a Bruce Lee head that'll fit on this that I need to cast. Uh, I've just been lagging on that, but I was kind of going through some of my Mezco figures uh, for one 12 day to see which ones I wanted to shoot. I ended up shooting uh, Alex Delars, a Clockwork Orange figure, but uh, I was like, man, I haven't really shot him. I don't think at all. I just messed around with them. So I was like, let's get a little setup on the table. And then just got two blue poster boards, just like all hag thrown back there. And then a bunch of greenery just thrown back there. The uh, bamboo, like, uh, bases, those are from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The other greenery, um, other than the other Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon one, is just, like, the dollar store stuff I legit just, like, threw back there. Because I kept knocking over my setup, so I was like, I'm just going to throw that shit back there. It's all blurried out in the picture anyway. It's out of focus. And I got some Chinese food dogs, add a little more depth. So background's a little hag, but picture came out cool. It's a fun little setup. Like I said, I always love whipping out this diorama. Also had this uh, Afro accessory that came with um, Andre the Giant. But I thought that just looked a little too crazy. Maybe if I ever cast this head, maybe I'll sculpt like a little mini Afro with like the sideburns or like the chops. Um, that would be kind of cool. But for now, I like the Mohawk look. I thought this character was really cool. Like out of the blind box, I was hoping I got him and I did. And then I do have accessories, like in the movie Game of Death, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wears glasses the whole time. That's like his gimmick, but I didn't really like the way, like I have like these, like Ray-Ban type glasses. I didn't really like the way these fit on his head, so. And I did have some like aviator style glasses, but they're a little too small. And these ones are just like a little too big. I guess, see, not really feeling those. A little too big. And then like I had a gold chain too, because... He's wearing like a small chain, but I don't know. With the glasses and the chain and stuff, he got more of kind of like a trendy vibe, which I didn't want like a trendy kid vibe. Kind of wanted it to be like a rocker version kind of uh, of the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar character, the Mantis character. Blind, Blind box, box.